work in VAR or Balfour and my occupation is quite varied but in general I um, work in tech and I have a series on iTunes and I'm a filmmaker with the iPhone. That's interesting. You are making a documentary, aren't you? I'm making a series of mini documentaries for the Insta generation, which I'm filming solely with the iPhone. And it's called The Visionaries. And I'm currently filming it now. And it will air at the end of February next year. I'm not quite sure I can say where yet, but um, we're filming that now. And yeah, it's going to be good. That's fantastic to hear. How would you say technology has helped the world of fashion in recent years? I think the thing with technology is that it's allowed everybody to PR and sell and market their products so easily and not just to one small society but to the whole world. So if you're a designer and you are based in Nigeria or wherever you're based and you normally in the olden days you just have one shop and the only way you would reach customers is by passing trade and by the people in that very small society. But because of the internet being a global means of communication, if you're a designer and you want to sell something, you could put it online and you have the power to sell that to the world. So it's opened up all sorts of opportunities and business, the things that other businesses didn't normally have. But the only thing with doing that is that your product has to be strong. You can promote your product on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You can spend thousands of dollars on building your own website to showcase your, your wares. But if the product that you're selling isn't strong, then all of that infrastructure, that e-infrastructure, is completely pointless. So people have to understand the importance of spending half the time and energy and money on social media, on building web, on creating that global communication, but you have to spend the other half on keeping the product really strong and understanding what people want. Because other, the one, one without the other is, is pointless. But I think, you know, if you look at something like net a which is an online platform selling a huge number of designers, it sells designers to people all around the world and brings those designers to the forefront, gives them the coverage and the exposure that they might not have had before. And it's, it's, it's remarkable that, you know, you can be in China, America, France, Spain, Italy, Germany, London, Nigeria, wherever you want to be, and you can access the designer of your choice from wherever you are in the world and have that delivered to your door and have it on your back the following day. I mean, it's, it's incredible for the, both the consumer and the, and the designer. Absolutely. I'm sorry, I just have to look at this. Um, so... Thanks to innovation, things are constantly changing. And with what you said regarding the use of social media and the internet, it's like fashion is becoming like a fast-paced environment right now. What advice would you give to small brands to stay on top of their games? I think it's that thing of just work, work, work. It's really hard work. You have to believe in what you're doing. You have to believe in yourself. I host this whole series called Fashion in Conversation for Apple. Um, which is on iTunes and in that I've interviewed some of the biggest designers in the world and Anna Winter, I interviewed the editor of American Vogue, Tom Ford, Manolo Blahnik, Philip Tracy. I mean, I've interviewed all these people and I always ask them the same question as, you know, what, what advice would you give and how did you get started? And everybody, no matter what, they, what background they've come from, I've just said it's just real hard work. And I know for me, when I've employed interns or assistants, the person who's just really passionate about what they're doing is the person that stays and gets the job. And it's such an obvious thing to say, but it's, you know, we've seen with Steve Wozniak today speaking, you know, he is just a passion. He's just got the passion. He'll go and make a computer if someone's paying him or not. He just wants to go home, watch Star Wars, like he said, eat his TV dinner and make a computer. And so for any, if we're talking about fashion, for any fashion designer, it's that thing of just make the clothes, make the things, test things out, get experience, learn to make mistakes when someone's not paying thousands of pounds for you to do those mistakes. Do it quietly in your own sitting room. Make clothes for your family, make clothes for your friends, try them out on Instagram, see what response comes back. And, you know, if something isn't working, be realistic too. If you only have eight followers on Instagram and you're trying to build a global business, then realize that you're not producing something that people want or the message in which you're conveying it is not a valid message because you know if something's really strong and really good people do pick up on it and the power of word of mouth is so so huge that if someone makes something that people like whether it's an apple computer or a skirt 
it, it does take off. And that's something I've seen with my Apple Talks. Everybody interviewed him, mean, like Tom Ford, you know, he's a global genius. And he had to start from somewhere. But he just kept doing things that people liked and he kept doing them some more. Now, a lot of people can make things that people like and then they're bored after two years and they lose interest and they lose the passion. That's no one's fault, but that is key to keeping the business going. It's all very well to start and launch and have these shiny, sparkly new website and, oh, you know, big fat show. I had a friend, you know, big fat fashion show, amazing. Two seasons later, he was tired. And that's no one's fault, but that's the way of the world. So I would say tread really carefully, learn, 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 always be open, be humble, and never, ever think that anybody owes you anything. That's been my experience. And when I do my Apple Talks now, and I have this series on iTunes, and this goes to like 900 million people, and I would never have imagined that I could have had this experience, and everybody said yes, and they all want to do the talk, and I've interviewed all these incredible people, I've now got so many on iTunes, but you know, I started with one. I started with the first talk asking, can't remember who it was, Mary Katransu, an amazing British designer. I was like, Mary, would you like to be interviewed by me in the Apple store? Because you're really fun and digital and amazing. She's like, okay. And then now we have this huge series that's now transformed into a film series and it's something I will always want to be a film director. So it's that kind of thing that just start really small, keep it really simple have an idea of the bigger picture but but just just keep that that original product or service that you're providing really really strong and then it will slowly build in time okay um let's talk about you i did a bit of research about you how is it that you're able to predict future trends in fashion how how do you do that i don't really know i mean I just sort of get a vibe for something and have a feeling for it. I do look at the catwalks and obviously once something's on the catwalk, some people would say, well, that's already into popular culture. Other people would say that's the beginning of something entering into popular culture. You have to see from which perspective it is because, you know, in Prada, spring, summer 2016, for example, they had like this amazing gold lips. And the gold was designed by this makeup artist called Pat McGrath, who's an amazing, amazing makeup artist. Now, for me, for some people, that's the very beginning of the gold makeup. For others, that's the end of the gold makeup journey. By the time it's arrived on the product catwalk, that's its kind of, that's its end. And I suppose for me, I'm somewhere in the middle where I understand the eye of the insider and the industry in itself, because I've worked on magazines and I've run websites and I've been one of those people that's looking and I am an early adopter I suppose but then I've also got the mind of people like my sisters or my mom who don't sit and look at the catwalks and are going to be six months down the line maybe and going oh there's a gold lipstick for sale and whoever like that looks radical and cool so I'm somewhere in between and I just I'm I follow everything with passion and people always say to me but how do I follow it and I suppose you know Instagram has been a real source of inspiration. Twitter, but then I just, on Twitter I sign up to all these crazy photographers and makeup artists and designers from around the world and you start to see what people are doing long before the mainstream are doing it. You know, I don't really pick up a magazine to tell me fashion news. For me, that's really old news. Once it's in a magazine, it's really old. But that's no disrespect to magazines. It's just, I found out about it long before. And, you know, I always, I, I, I watch a lot of films. The moment they come out, I scan the internet for crazy weird documentaries. And, I mean, I just saw this film, Tangerine, which is amazing. It's a big feature. It's filmed solely on the iPhone. It's going to win loads of awards. I reckon the stars will be real big Oscars nominees. It's, it's crazy and it's amazing. But I had heard about it at least a year ago, but it wasn't released in the UK until this week. So there's that feeling that you know about some things, but you can't always act on them, but you build this story and you build these ideas in your mind and slowly, but it's just like little files. And then you go to this and you go, oh, tech couture, that's, that's getting bigger and bigger. And oh, gold, oh, someone else was, oh, this is growing and growing. And it's like that, I suppose. You can, I kind of have little pots in my head and they all go in and you go, that's a trend or that was just an idea. I mean, thanks for sharing this exposure with us. Um, so how have you found this event so far? 
It's just been so great. I'm so honored to be speaking here alongside someone like Steve Wozniak. For me, it's like one of the biggest opportunities of my life. And so nice to be in Nigeria. Everyone's been so welcoming, so hospitable, so passionate. Everybody's so passionate. I've met amazing people from all fields, very creative. And, um, you know, Access Bank have been very taking care of me and being very, very kind and very, very, they have lovely staff looking after me. So it's great. But I think for me, the highlight is that I'm speaking on the stage after Steve Wozniak. That is one of the, the most exciting things for me. And I'm going to really look, really remember this experience.